our guided tour of Hermann Göring's former bunker, begins near the former adjutant's office of Hermann Göring. Access is via a material shaft and with the help of a rope ladder. First, however, a look at the site plan which should give us a better overview of the upcoming inspection. We divide our inspection into two sections, the entrance and the pre-tunnel, as well as the ascent of the main bunker with the private caverns. We first descend about 8 meters to the level of the inclined gallery, which at that time was to be converted into a stairway. The access to the bunker from Göring's adjutant's office was not completed until the end of the war. The steep inclined tunnel then leads downward to the level of the pre-bunker. As in all Obersalzberg bunkers, all access points to the interior of the facility were secured against intruders by machine gun emplacements. This is the only remaining entry point into the Göring bunker that still exists today. The depth of the shaft is about 7.9 meters. At a depth of 7.9 meters, this former material shaft meets an inclined gallery that was supposed to have been converted into a stairway, but this never happened. Immediately behind the entrance shaft, the passage makes a 90-degree turn and ends in the basement of Goring's former adjutant's office. To the left and right are bricked-up openings. The opening on the left lead into a corridor that leads to a rented apartment in the former adjutancy. Here again, the typical machine gun and bumper installation. Here is the gas lock for the center area and the entrance to the underground machine gun stands. To the right is now the decontamination room, which was not quite finished. It was fully tiled, but the bathtub and sinks were never installed. We are now on our way to the pre-bunker. The first cavern on the left is the technical cavern. This is where the technical installations were located. Here on the right are the toilets. The layout is identical to that in all the other bunkers we already know. Both sides, ladies' and men's rooms, are identical. Here 
Here on the left is the cavern for Goring's personal staff. These caverns had parquet floors as well as wood paneling. We now reach the key point, straight ahead, the continuation and the beginning of the actual private bunker for the Goring family. On the right, the access to the emergency exit, which is somewhat lower in level. And on the far left, a cavern, which we now visit a little more closely. It is a very high cavern. This is probably where the telephone exchange was located. It is difficult to reconstruct today, but it is the only possible room in this bunker. For a better overview, here again the site plan. We have now reached the key point of the bunker. Three corridors meet here. The corridor of the pre-bunker, which we have already passed. The emergency exit. And the gallery of the main bunker. Now we come to the inspection of the main bunker of Hermann Göring, with the private caverns of Emmy and Hermann Göring, the personal servants and guests, as well as the entrance to the Göring's country house. This is the main corridor of the actual Goring bunker. The first cavern on the left was Hermann Goring's private apartment, divided into five rooms, including a bathroom. Here at the end of the cavern was Goring's bedroom. Toilette and links washbecken. Toilet, and to the left a wash basin. Documents were burned here, therefore the complete section is covered with soot. Here on the right is the kitchen cavern. You can still see a foundation for an electric refrigerator in the background. The arrangement of the kitchen is typical for the Obersalzberg bunkers. The penultimate cavern on the western side is the private cavern of Emmy Goring, consisting of a living room, a dressing room in the front area, and at the rear, a bed and bathroom. By the way, in this bathroom, there is also a bathtub. Here on the right are more toilets.
you know, the cavern. The cavern allegedly contained the children's room of Etta Goring. Accordingly, it was also the normal recreation room for the child as well as the nanny. We are now going through the gas lock in the northern direction. There were no decontamination rooms here. The air raid door is still intact here. Behind it, again, the typical machine gun bumper system. Here then begins the staircase, which goes up with a total of 123 steps to the walled off place. The steps are worked out in red concrete stone. This staircase is a special feature of the Obersalzberg bunkers. The difference in height between the cellar of Göring's country house and the level of the main tunnel is overcome here. In the half of the staircase, there is an offset of about 10 meters and the direction of the ascent or descent is changed. The reason for this was based on the assumption that in the event of a bombing raid, the hasty clockwise descent could cause dizziness among the seeking shelter. The direction of rotation of the staircase was intended to counteract this. After 123 steps, the passage ends at the walled off place. Only a few meters behind this wall was the entrance to the bunker in the cellar of Hermann Göring's house. We go back to the pre-bunker via the staircase and make a small exploration into the emergency exit at the end of our bunker inspection. After 78 steps from the bottom to the top, the staircase has an offset. Here in the crossing room, a branch goes to the emergency exit. This was originally used as a hoisting gallery during bunker construction and as with most bunkers, was then converted to an emergency exit. This is the exit to the level of the lower tunnel. Another machine gun shaft, this time in the opposite direction. Next, a view into the machine gun shaft from the rear. The design was again standard for Ober Salzburg. From the machine gun shafts, one enters the engine room, which is located directly below the crossing room. Here, a rack for an emergency generator is still clearly visible.
About 30 to 40 years ago, the Berchtesgarten salt mine tried to build a water reservoir in the bunker facilities, which was supposed to go under the entire bunker. However, it soon turned out that the entire underground gallery area was not watertight. Nevertheless, there are still some water basins here today. Let's continue our walk in the direction of the emergency exit. We are now in the bumper of the machine gun nest. And can see here already in the distance, the bricked off section, which was prepared by the salt mine some decades ago. Behind this welded plate, the passage continues for about 40 to 50 meters and then ends below the eagle and raptor enclosure at Hinterreck. The ruins of Hermann Göring's country house were demolished and a four-star mountain resort and luxury hotel is to be built on the Eckerbichl. The now exposed bunker entrance that led into the cellar of Göring's house will be covered with a concrete slab weighing several tons and later filled with demolition material.